Even though it's a lot safer than traveling on the ground, flying is still one of those things that terrifies us. Maybe because we're six miles off the floor, or maybe because we don't understand the logistics of how such a huge piece of metal can take off. In this video, we've put together a list of 10 airplane features that you might not have considered in the past that all work together to improve your safety. So are you ready? We're about to take off. Next time you're on a plane, you won't have to worry about what all these features are there for, so you'll need something else to do instead. Before we start, make sure to click on the subscribe button so you're well prepared for a few hours up in the air. Weird seat numbers. The majority of airline seats are tiny, and we all feel that pressure of frantically trying to hunt down your seat number without holding everyone up behind you. But think about it. Have you ever flown on row 13? Probably not. This doesn't apply to all airlines, but a growing number do not have a 13th row in the plane, and it's all because of superstitious flyers. It's thought to be the unluckiest number, so would you really want to chance your luck on this row when you could sit absolutely anywhere else? What are the chances of the 13th row's oxygen mask not working, or the window falling out, or something equally as dangerous? Well, realistically, your chance of this happening is no different to sitting in any other seat, but plenty of passengers are not happy to take the risk. This is such a big deal for some that airlines now have skipped the row completely and go straight from 12 to 14. However, it's not only the 13th row that doesn't exist anymore, the 17th row doesn't either on certain airlines. It's considered an unlucky number in Italy and Brazil, so to keep passengers happy and calm, it's no longer there either. Next thing you know, we'll be getting rid of gate 13 too. Dimmed lights. It's a common misconception that plane lights are dimmed during takeoff and landing at nighttime to stop the lights shining into nearby buildings. We wouldn't want to wake anybody up, of course, ignoring the loud noises that planes make anyway. In fact, the reason why the lights are dimmed at these points is completely different, and not necessarily one you'll want to hear. The plane is most likely to crash or have an accident during these periods, meaning you're more likely than ever to have to evacuate the plane during takeoff or landing. This isn't too bad, we'd much rather jump a few feet out the window than from a thousand feet in the sky, but it's still not ideal. When the lights are dimmed, our eyes adjust to the surroundings. If you have to make an emergency exit from the plane, you'll be better equipped to do so if your eyes are already matched to the darkness outside, instead of seeing glaring lights seconds before you're outside the plane. Your body will react better to the consistent darkness. As a result, you're more likely to survive. We don't think we're going to complain about having to use the reading light ever again after finding this out. Ashtray in the bathroom. Smoking on planes has been illegal for as long as we can remember, and for good reason. Nobody wants the plane to spontaneously combust mid-flight, and the smell of cigarettes isn't especially something we'd relish in confined spaces anyway. It's generally thought that everybody abides by these rules, because who would be selfish enough anyway to light up when you're so high in the air? It's a walking safety hazard. But have you ever noticed that most airplanes usually still have an ashtray in the bathroom, despite signs all over the place warning you not to smoke? It's clear that airline staff aren't quite as trusting as we once thought. You might have been like us and wondered if the ashtrays remained because we were flying on a really old plane. By that logic, it had been too costly or just a waste of time to go around removing every single ashtray from each plane, and maybe they don't exist on all planes now. Nope, the ashtray is there just in case someone does ignore all the rules and lights up in the bathroom. In the grand scheme of things, it's much safer to put it out in an ashtray than it is to throw it in the bin, where there's a high chance it would set a light and then we'd all be finished. The Weird Window Shape You've probably heard the myth of that guy on a plane who somehow managed to open the window and his eyes popped out because of the pressure. It's a story that's been repeated absolutely everywhere, and we're 99% sure it's not true. But it has led us to wonder why plane windows are such a weird shape. Your traditional window is square, but the airplane windows are strangely curved, and it's not for aesthetic purposes. Instead, the curved windows reduce the pressure, making the aircraft safer and the windows sturdier. In a typical square window, there are four weak points, the four corners. This is why, in an emergency, you're supposed to break the corners to get free. You probably wouldn't fit through a plane window in this circumstance, so the reason is purely for safety purposes. When hitting high speeds up in the air, there's a lot of pressure on the windows. The curved element means this pressure is spread almost evenly around the surface, making it far safer and less likely to crack. You might have complained in the past because it restricted your view, but we bet you'll be far happier to miss out on the scenery now that you know the true reason for their odd shape. In-flight food envy. Did you know airline pilots aren't allowed to eat the same meal as each other? While the rest of us are slumming it with an unidentified lump of food and some below standard coffee, airline pilots get different food. This probably doesn't come as a surprise, except they eat different food to each other. The next part might make you doubt airplane food even more than usual. 
because the reason why pilots aren't allowed to eat the same food is due to risk of food poisoning. It's pretty smart when you think about it. If both pilots get sick at the same time and you're 30,000 feet in the air, we're not really sure what would happen. Aside from food, they're also not allowed to share drinks. You'd think the risk of contaminated drinks was pretty low, but it's not a risk many airlines are prepared to take. If the pilots are forced to eat the same food, either due to dietary requirements or just lack of alternatives, one must wait half an hour after the first is finished to check for any potential food poisoning effects. We guess becoming a pilot isn't the career of choice for anyone who suffers from frequent food envy or a weak stomach. Flying on an empty tank. The same way you stock up on fuel before starting a long road trip, you would assume aircrafts fill up their tanks right to the top before flying. Better to be safe than sorry, right? Actually, they do the opposite and fly with as little fuel in the tank as they can get away with. But it's all for a good reason. Airplanes are obviously incredibly heavy, and it takes a lot of fuel to get going. The more it's weighed down with passengers and bags, the heavier it's going to be. As a result, it'll use up more fuel. So logically, the less fuel you have in the plane, the lighter it'll be, and the less fuel it'll then need to use. Carrying excess fuel only weighs the plane down, so companies like to combat this by only adding the exact amount of fuel that they're going to use. This is always a bit of a risk. You've got to have a good estimation of how much fuel you're going to need, because while you're in the air, it's not like you can have a spontaneous pit stop at the nearest gas station. However, even if this does happen, it's not the end of the world. On the few occasions it has, the airplane has simply landed at a closer airport to stock up on fuel and then taken off again. Opening bathroom doors from the outside. It's probably one of your biggest fears on airplanes, having someone open the door to the bathroom while you're inside. Most of the time, it's pretty irrational. Locks are designed to keep people out, but on airplanes, it's a whole other situation. When you're high up in the air, there's only so much staff can do to look after you. Therefore, they have to make sure that everything is easily accessible in case of emergencies. This means that unlike your traditional door, there's a very easy way to force entry if it's needed. It's a pretty well-kept secret, but if you lift the lavatory sign on the bathroom, there is a switch to open the door. These switches do vary between different airlines, and unless you've worked for one, you probably won't ever find out the exact way of opening it from the outside, but it does exist. Now this is very frowned upon unless you're airline staff, and will most likely end in you getting escorted off the plane with the police if you do it for fun, but it's a handy tip for the aircraft staff if someone's having problems. Generally, it's only used in serious cases, like if someone passes out inside or if a child is stuck in there. Lightning Strike Prevention If you're not scared of someone opening the bathroom door on you, you most definitely are of the plane being struck by lightning. But did you know, even if the plane is struck, it's very unlikely to have an impact on your journey? This probably sounds crazy because we've all heard horror stories about planes being struck and falling thousands of feet, but modern planes are actually built to withstand lightning. It's a pretty impressive feature and has made flying a whole lot safer. Planes are designed to allow the lightning to move along the skin of the aircraft without conducting any damage. It's actually very common to be in a plane that's been struck by lightning and not even really noticed it. The outside of the plane is usually covered in copper, so even when lightning hits one of the extremities, like the wing, it's protected to the extent that the underlying layers won't be affected. More importantly, the fuel tanks are thoroughly protected to be safe from danger. Occasionally, the lightning will cause the generator to fail, which can result in the lights going out. But this special feature means you're actually safer up in the air on the plane than you are on the ground next to the plane, if lightning does strike. Engine Fail it's almost unheard of, but on the tiny chance both engines in your plane fail, you won't fall to the ground too fast, don't worry. We've all occasionally heard of one engine failing on the plane, but an impressive precautionary feature means we're all pretty likely to survive if it happens, even if it means having to take a slight detour en route. When an aircraft is in flight, it has a 1 to 10 lift to drag ratio. This means that for every 10 miles it goes forward, it'll lose one in height. By that logic, if you're 6 miles up in the air and the engine fails, you can fly another 60 miles forward and downward before the engine truly gives up. This leeway means the pilot can almost certainly conduct a safe landing, even if it's not the destination you're hoping for. Unless you're flying over the middle of an ocean, there's likely to be somewhere safe to land nearby, although it might shock residents a little bit. Even one engine failing is a pretty rare occurrence thanks to modern technology and specialist engineering. But it's always nice to know that we won't plummet down to earth if something actually did happen. Holy Windows If you're unfortunate enough to not have Wi-Fi on your plane, or you've just finished your book, you might have noticed the tiny little hole in the corner of your airplane window. Don't be shocked, it's there internationally and has been placed in every single window on every single plane for a specific purpose. The hole is known officially as a breather hole and is used to regulate the amount of pressure inside the window. Airplane windows have three layers and this hole guides the inside pressure out and vice versa. 
Luckily, the hole is on one of the inner layers because it might not be quite so efficient on the outside. You probably wouldn't be surprised to hear it's the outside layer of the window that faces the most pressure, so the hole is tucked on the inside to allow it to perform most proficiently. If there is too much pressure, the hole makes sure it's the outside layer which breaks so you'll still be able to breathe properly. It's also used to stop the cabin fogging up, which is great, because otherwise we would all struggle to get that taking off from the runway shot that we all upload every single time we get on a plane. Even if you're a veteran flyer, there were probably a few features in this video that you weren't aware of. Wasn't that fun? Now hold on tight because we're aiming for a smooth landing. We hope you enjoyed this video and make sure to click subscribe to The Hub for plenty more interesting videos. Thanks!